Hi, it's Sandy Parker, and welcome to Crafting for Almost Everyone. Today we're going to work with a really cool stencil from Stencil Revolution and some hummingbirds. I hope you'll stay tuned. First of all, I fell in love with this stencil of lavender, and, and this time of year lavender, lavender is so beautiful. And I thought I would put it off to the side on, this is an eight and a half inch long by five and a half inch tall card and I scored it at four and a quarter so this makes what's called an A2 size card if you didn't know that. I'm going to flip it over this way because I didn't cut it exactly straight and I have this little piece overlapping so go with it on the bigger side. In case you wondered go with it on the front. Then I have these really lovely uh, flowers that I want to put off to the right and then I have these gorgeous Hero Arts, um, I don't know if you can see them, they're little hummingbirds, and so I want to put them on, now that I think about it, I think I need to put these over here, because they're, oh, I guess that one's flying in the right direction, geez, I'm losing my mind, I'm going to go with that one, and I have a sentiment on here that says, you're the sweetest, um, I think of all of them, that's the one I'm going to use. I just think it's a sweet sentiment. Ah, sweet sentiment, get it? And I thought what I would do is figure out where to put this first. I think I'm going to do it like that. And I'll put you're the sweetest on while I'm playing. I might as well do this too. So let's put this in the misty so we can make sure it's in the right spot. Here's where I think I'm going to put that. And I don't know where I want to put this. You're the sweetest. I guess I'm going to move this right there. I'm going to put you're the sweetest up as high as I can. Again, I apologize for how filthy my Misty is. And I'm going to use some Onyx Black, Versafine Onyx Black ink. The lid just went in the floor somewhere. We'll ignore that. I should use my Theron. You don't really need to move it back and forth if you just push down on it. If you don't know the story about the Baron, I bought it at DickBlick.com specifically for this little problem I have. That when I'm using the Misty, I don't have the arm strength to push down where I need to. So the Baron gives me kind of the uh, leverage, I guess we'll call it, to get in those places that I struggle with. The first thing I want to do, though, is I want to get some clear embossing powder. I've been playing with embossing powders. If you've been watching my latest videos, you know I've been playing with embossing powders, and I've been making a big mess in my embossing powder collection. And I use a little medicine cup in my clear embossing powder just to make sure that it's um, easy to get, easy to get where I want it. For those of you who use other methods, that's what I use. I think it works good. I've seen people use other things, but for me, that little um, medicine cup has been the best, best option. Heat up your tool. While I'm heating up my tool, I'm going to find my mono pump. It's a mono eraser, I think it's called. Mono sand eraser. And hopefully that will get these dark spots that I already got on here off. Make sure it's all completely finished. And I think I'm going to use some alcohol markers on the hummingbird. So I'm going to grab those and I'll be right back. 
Here are the alcohol markers I'm going to use. Most of them are Touch 4 and two of them I think are Studio 71. The stem, excuse me, the Studio 71's are R16 and R18 in the red family and then 11 in the red family in my Touch 5's. Then in the green family this looks like 50 and 55 also 52 and then the turquoisey color looks like it could be 65 then in the yellowish goldish colors 36 101 and 104 so let me start with them The other thing I like to tell you is once I use my colors, I put them to the right so I remember which ones I used. That way if I do want to go back over it with another color, like I'm going to go back over it with the lightest color that I used, um, that way if I'm going to do that, I can um, find them quite easily. When outside the lines, I'm definitely going to have to get my... Um, uh, colorless blender to get out some of these crazy things that I keep doing. And then I'm going to go back in this one. And I have a dark red. A super dark red. Let me find that one and I'll be right back. Okay, I've got my colorless blender because I already have some spots that are bugging me and I want to make sure I don't forget to fix them. This one is made by Windsor and Newton. I'm just going to try and get rid of some of this red that's on the outside of the body. And then there's a little gold up here I'd like to eliminate. Yeah, that ought to do it for now. Then the red that I wanted was this, I think it's number two, it's called Old Red. It's just a very super dark color. I just want to kind of outline just want to outline that area and then I'm going to go back over it with my other red just so hopefully we can blend them a little bit and if I can't I'll just go over it with that deep red again that's pretty good now, let's do some greens. I think the next thing I want to do, I'm going to clean up my background again. Now, we're going to try and put this so that it's kind of right where he's going to be sticking his beak. And I'm going to get a little bit of washi tape to hold this down with. And I like to use the washi tape from the Dollar Tree because I can take most of the adhesive off of it and make it so that it um, is easy to pull off without ripping my background. And what I do, um, for the most part, the easiest way to do this is to put it on your skin and make sure that you know that you've taken some of the sticky off. Is rip a couple pieces. One up by my birdie. 
there. And this gives me some room to move it around. I think I'm probably also going to be adding something over in here. Some color of some kind or I don't know, something. I don't know. Maybe I'll maybe I'll put another section of the um what do I call those? I forgot the word of the lavender again. I might do that. I don't know. I'm going to put another little strip of this along the bottom just because I can. I'm going to be using Flower Soft. If you've never seen Flower Soft, and believe me, I saw it three or four years ago. I don't know if it was still in vogue then or not, but when I saw it, I just was in love with it. And I have this light lavender color and I have this dark lavender color. And then I also have a white. The green, I'm not crazy about. It's too dark or too, yeah, too dark. You know what I mean? It's too vibrant for what I'm doing. But uh, for now, we're going to use those three colors. Because you know I couldn't help myself when I saw it. I was like, oh, I have to have all these colors. To do the stems, this is how I plan on doing it. They, they had this glue called Flower Soft Glue, but the place I bought it really recommended that you use, um, before I open this, I think what I'm going to do is use the kind of glue that I intended to use all along, and that was, they recommended that you use like a glitter glue or a Tombow Mono Aqua, and so I'm going to use this glue, which is Cosmic Shimmer glue. I don't remember where I got it, but I'll make sure I put the information below in the, you know, in the info below. And basically, all I'm going to do is put enough of it around in these spots that hopefully, this is a little bit thicker glue, and I'm going to put this in the spots and hope that um, I'll get enough of the flower soft to stay on these petals. And I'm trying to go right to the edges. You do need some kind of a fine tip to do this. Now I'm going to just have Rich fast forward through the next part because I don't think you're going to be interested in having me just glue. First step, we're going to, I'm going to do just a little bit of the white, and I have a spoon in here, and I know all these have color names, but I don't know, as I said, I don't know how hard this stuff is to find, so I'm just going to do a little bit near the bottom, and what I'm going to do is each time I do this, I'm going to pat it in place. So now I have this empty container. I think what I'm going to do is dump my excess into this and see where I need to add glue, or if I need to add any glue, I'm hoping. The part I do like is awesome though. I don't know if you can see how cool that is, but it is really cool looking. Alright, back over these areas with glue. cool part will be when I take off the stencil or else that'll be the bad part. We'll know that in a minute, right? Okay. It looks pretty cool, but I think I need to add more Flower Soft into these little areas. Wherever I have glue still showing. Okay, next 
up. We're going to fill some more of our greenery in. I'm going to go with an olive green color, 42. So what I think I'm going to do is maybe find some green stickles or something like that. let all that dry and then we'll come back and see how it looks I'm pretty happy with the way it looks right now but I really want to have one more thing to kind of offset the purple and make it kind of look good and I thought what I would do is just run a piece of ribbon across the bottom so I'm just going to take some of my tear tape and hopefully it's straight you know how that goes Sometimes it is, and sometimes it isn't. And I'm going to just make sure it's really tight up against that. And then we'll take the backing off, hopefully. There's that. And I cut this piece of ribbon a little bit long just so I could get my fingers on either side of it. How's that look? Straight, close enough. And this kind of ribbon always seems to um, unravel. So we want to make sure that we do a good job of cutting it. So I'm just going to go from the back and use my card as the straight edge. Ah. I thought about putting it on either side of you're the sweetest, but Rich told me sometimes I go too far, and he thought that would be going too far. I do like it, though. Then I'm going to stamp the back. And I think the next thing I have to do is I'm going to put a cover sheet on the inside because, obviously, I had that little problem where I got um, my alcohol markers bled through. And plus, I have fuzz everywhere. So I'm going to do a piece of white that's the same size as that, and I'll be right back. Alrighty, so I've made this stamp. I don't know if you've ever noticed this. Uh, We've seen it before, but I had this made a really long time ago. It says, I'm wishing you a day filled with joy. I thought that would be fun to just use a pre-made stamp on the inside of my card. There you go. So there's our card. I hope that you enjoyed this, that you give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Please tell your friends about me on social media because you know I love that. And thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.